Hey guys, can you see me? Can you hear me? Hope you're able to see me and hear me. Uh, welcome back, this is Dr. Anjit here again. So we'll be discussing about the GIT questions, like just an overview here. Uh, we are going to have series of sessions. We have been doing that for NEED PG for the past one, uh, I think two weeks. So we'll be having two, we are going to bifurcate here into two things because in YouTube daily by 7 p.m. We'll be discussing the images. Okay, that's one part. The second part will be 30 MCQs because I want to keep it short so that I can finish it earlier and I can, you can, you guys can go back to sleep so that your routine uh, doesn't get disturbed. So maximum by, we'll start by 10 p.m. Whenever we finish the 30 questions, we'll end it, right? So that's what we're going to do. And today's topic will be GIT. I, I hope you must have seen in the Telegram and Instagram things. Today will be about GIT, esophagus, stomach, your intestine, and your uh, little bit of the non-neoplastic part of intestine, right? Neoplasms will be seeing it tomorrow, okay? So we have in special class features, we have in, included all the interactive sessions here. Okay, uh, I share with this, no mix it back. It will be the same, we'll be going with GIT, as I said, right, GIT. Tomorrow will be the intestine, neoplasms, and the uh, liver, fine, that'll be tomorrow, right? okay. We have an updated QBank, there's a batch starting on 18th of August for you guys. And one month subscription is back again. So if you want uh, them, you can uh, go ahead with that. If you don't have any code, you can use Pathocups, or you can use any code possible, fine, okay. Now let's start with today's. It's going to be super fast session where you're going to see almost images what is there in Robbins, okay? So this is the first image. Okay, it's an esophageal endoscopic image. Comment what do you think? It's just an esophageal endoscopy. I think the answer is pretty much straightforward here, right? You can see the curdy white areas. What's the answer? Perfect. You're going to think of a candidial esophagitis, right? And it's in candidial esophagitis. Very, very classical. See, I just want to add one more thing here. It's not always Candida will be curdy white. See, most of the time Candida is going to be curdy white. We have no other doubt in that, right? That's one. I just keep, do remember this also. When you have an yellowish lesion, okay? Yellowish lesion, also think of Candida. If nothing else fits in, right? It's almost always like 99% is going to be uh, your curdy white lesion only, which will be in your image. If you have yellowish lesion, same like ulcerative lesion, yellowish color, do think of candida there also. But that time you will definitely have a microscopy to correlate this candida esophagitis, right? Just an extra information, fine? Good evening, Masaki. Okay, comment on this. Again, an endoscopic image. I'm sure this came in an MCQ previously. The clue here is the appearance of the ulcer. These are also ulcers. I might give you a hint. These ulcers are punched out. Punched out esophageal ulcer. What's the answer? You have multiple, you have punched out esophageal ulcer. Abhishek is correct. The first thought you're going to have is your HSV, right? Herpes simplex esophagitis. Punched out is classical for HSV. So just tell me, just to refresh your knowledge, what will you see in your microscopy of HSV? If I'm going to take this biopsy, I'm going to look at them under microscopy, what you're going to see. Now, just in HSV also, this is not malaria waste, right? What will you be seeing in microscopy? You will see. The first and the only clue what I, I want in HSV is multinucleation, right? The multinucleated eosinophilic inclusion is characteristic of an HSV, okay? Punched out in cross and multinucleated giant cell, eosinophilic intranuclear inclusion, diagnostic of H, uh, your H, herpes simplex of HSV. Perfect. You guys are great. Okay, good. We'll move on to this. This also was asked once, not the image was asked, it was asked in a different way. The term was asked here. What do you see here? This is your classical. This is also from Robbins. This is your classical. Feline esophagus, right? So classical feline esophagus. You can see that the ripples, the ripples are due to the muscle contraction. That's your feline esophagus. If you have feline esophagus on the gross, one thing you should look for in microscopy. What do you look for this in microscopy? If you're going to take a biopsy here, what do you look for? You look for one finding, your eosinophils, right? Eosinophilic esophagitis, right? Perfect. So I'm gonna have eosinophils here. So let's say if I'm having anywhere, like what happens in GIT is, I do have a cutoff criteria for diagnosing eosinophilic esophagitis. There's a different cutoff for esophagus, a different cutoff for stomach, and different cutoff for intestine. For esophagus, GIT is one more possibility, that's also correct, actually. But first thing, yes, eosinophilic esophagitis. Am I right in saying that 
entire cluster here as well as in between here all of them are eosinophils you can see the pink granules right all of them are eosinophils hello Karthik so here my criteria is this do remember this criteria this is only for esophagus when we go to other parts we'll say greater than 15 eosinophils per high power field high power field is your 40x in your 40x microscope I should have greater than 15 eosinophils if it is there that's more than enough for me to call eosinophilic esophagitis fine it could be just an eosinophilic esophagitis or it could be part of some other sin uh, some other hyper eosinophilic syndrome as such fine okay great okay tell me the diagnosis actually here everything is there for diagnosis this biopsy is from um, for you to diagnose let's say the biopsy is from 25 centimeter from incisors the biopsy is from 25 centimeter from incisors which means almost like mid esophagus right you are very very classical diagnosis here I want you to comment on the stain you are seeing as well it's not an HNE stain it's definitely not HNE it's Barrett's esophagus what stain is this perfect you can see them right this is Alcyon blue so when I say 15 centimeter from your incisors I should have only squamous epithelium but here what is this epithelium that's one epithelium there I'm having glands here right not only glands, the glands secreting mucin, the alcyon blue mucin, right? I can see mucin here, mucin is seen, plus I'm seeing squamous epithelium. When I say 25 centimeter from incisors, it should be mid esophagus, I should not see a gland, so my diagnosis is Barrett's esophagus, right? Okay, what carcinoma will this progress to? It will progress to carcinoma, what type of carcinoma, squamous or adeno? It's going to go to adeno carcinoma, right? I can see quite a few of you guys commenting intestinal metaplasia. I would prefer the term columnar metaplasia. WHO has changed it. I want you to call this as columnar lined esophagus. You have to know this abbreviation. CLO is the reason abbreviation. It's called as columnar lined esophagus. The term intestinal has been removed. So we'll go to the updated one, right? Columnar lined esophagus. Fine. Perfect. Great. Okay. You must have seen this, right? I'm sure. Does it look like a brain? It's an endoscopic finding again. Does it look like a brain? Kind of like more and more and more folds, right? More and more folds. The answer is written here, meniterous disease. It does look like a brain. So what happens in meniterous is there's too much of proliferation of the epithelium, right? A brain-like configuration, meniterous disease. I am, I've written the answer, so my question is going to be different. Tell me the mutation which happens in meniterous disease. What mutation happens in meniterous disease? It's cerebriform appearance, brain lake configuration, everything is perfect. Tell me the mutation. I'm sure quite a few of you know the mutation as well, right? Yeah, TGF, not beta, alpha, right? TGF alpha. Generally, we go everywhere about TGF beta. Here is TGF alpha. So don't make a mistake. Yeah, you have protein losing entropy as a clinical feature. TGF alpha is the mutation. Perfect, right? So we have lots of uh, hypertrophic gastropathies and gastric polyp. If you remember in the last exam, we had a question of there was an image of microscopic image of parietal cells given and lots of parietal cell hyperplasia. This syndrome will have parietal cell hyperplasia, right? We had that we had that question. So I'm just going to ask you, tell me which of the cell is going to get proliferated too much in this following subtypes, like in meniterous disease. When you go to stomach, we have parietal, we have mucous cells, we have your chief cells, all of them, right? So in a all of the my hypertrophy disease in your mucus uh, meniterous disease which cell gets hypertrophy the cell type which is going to get hypertrophy in meniterous is it mucus or parietal or chief cells it's foveolar hyperplasia it's your predominantly your mucus hyperplasia in meniterous fine last time what question was what question came was is zollinger elson syndrome in your zollinger elson syndrome what cells undergo hypertrophy this was the question which came. The answer is parietal predominantly. It's going to be predominantly parietal cell hyperplasia. If I have to choose one, I'm going to go to parietal. But yes, mucus as well as your neuroendocrine cells also undergoes hypertrophy, right? If you to choose one, go with your parietal cells. Okay, this was the question which is asked. So we're just going to see something in related to that. We have inflammatory polyps, right? Inflammatory polyps are very common in your intestine. Inflammatory polyps, one of the predominant cause of inflammatory polyps is H. pylori. What type of cells gets hypertrophied in your inflammatory or your hyperplastic polyps? In both of them, same cells. What cells do you think will be hypertrophic will be increased in your inflammatory and hyper uh, in your hyperplastic polyp? Inflammatory hyperplastic polyp again is going to be mucous cells. Okay. 
the predominant is going to be mucus cells see they are h pylori induced when i have h pylori induced i'm going to have atrophy of other cells right everything is gone mucus cells alone allow hyperplasia fine so in microscopy also i expect same mucus secreting clear clear cells there fine okay when you have fundic gland polyp this other type of polyp in your stomach a fundic gland polyp tell me what cells is hypertrophy in fundic gland polyp fundic gland polyp is seen in secondary to ppi and also can be seen in association with familial adenomatous polyposis what cells gets hypertrophy in fundic gland polyp here your chief cells and your parietal cells perfect your parietal cells also and also one more person is chief cells see these are common lesions since they have asked previously zollinger ritzel syndrome we might get something in relation to that your meniteus can be asked inflammatory hyperplastic polyps also a fundic gland polyps can be asked right so we are just cover them as well okay few more images you're going to answer i'm not going to help you right diagnosis not only the diagnosis i want diagnosis as well as tell the cell um, stain both i want little bit greedy right so diagnosis as well as the stain diagnosis straightforward it's in gastric biopsy so these guys are nothing but my h pylori easiest one to pick up right and the stain it's black in color right so i would think of a silver stain if you say silver stain also i'm happy actually it's going to be stainer silver worth in study also also not wrong this stain which is normally used for h pylori is called as a stainer silver stain okay and stainer silver See, it's just the staining technique. Warthin study can also be used. Okay. If you, I should, you should not have both in the exam. Either one, Warthin study or Stina silver, both of them are good enough. Ultimately, I'm going to use a silver stain for this. Fine, that's all. Okay, great. Next, tell me the stain. Diagnosis is stain. This is also H pylori. What's the stain used here? Actually, this is the most common stain used for H pylori. Silver is not commonly used because they are expensive. Fine. What's the stain used here? Stain is blue color, only shades of blue, so it is Jeemsa. See, Jeemsa is a commonly used stain. Not methyl blue, it's Jeemsa stain. This is a commonly used stain because it's cheaper. Silver is expensive, right? You can't uh, use silver right, left, and center. This is a Jeemsa stain. Okay? Yeah, Toledin blue also looks blue in color, but Jeemsa, it's not Alcian blue, this is Jeemsa stain. Jeemsa stain can highlight your organisms in the lumen your h pylori organisms fine okay this is a commonly done stain for h pylori okay what is this diagnosis let's see how many of you pick it up i'm not going to answer it you saw this you saw this just now fap fap no this is stomach if i want to help you this is stomach No, no, no. The same menetria, right? The same stomach, menetria. See, it totally looks different in an endoscopy and when I resect it. The same menetria, brain lake configuration. If it said stomach, all of you said menetria. In your history, there'll be stomach or a protein losing entropathy or whatever it is. Fine. Great. Cerebriform appearance from stomach. Great. See, what happens in menetria is, like we read that, we saw there's going to be uh, mucus gland hyperplasia, right? Am I right in saying that all these cells are mucin secreting cells? I'll zoom it up if, if you guys want. Definitely lots of mucin secreting cells, mucus gland hyperplasia. So, what are we read is correct. So, many trials in microscopy have mucus gland hyperplasia, and one famous finding is you have something called an corkscrew glands. Though it's not so classical, you have something called an corkscrew glands, the corkscrew appearance of glands, which can be seen in many disease as well. Fine. So it's mucus, sure, and the corkscrew appearance of the glands is also diagnostic of meniteus disease. Okay. Uh, Money make like when I say villus adenoma, I would prefer it's an intestinal lesion. And tell me where you will have villus. It will a villi will be like this, or a villi will project from the surface. Villi generally projects from the surface, right? What it appears is here it's going down. So it's not actually a villi, these are gastric pits, right? I hope it's clear. Here from the surface, when it goes up, I call it villi. From the surface, it's going to go down. It's either your crypt or your pits. 
okay i hope it's clear these are benign or malignant that's the only thing i'm going to ask here benign or malignant this is malignant if i'm going to say biopsy it's looking ugly right here and here and i can definitely have lots of blue thing mitosis going on here mostly malignant and the biopsy is from stomach tell me your diagnosis intestinal type or diffuse type it's 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 having more of bluish color so it's going to be malignant right malignant and intestinal type or a diffuse type cancer we have only two uh, cancers in your stomach on microscopy this is your intestinal type cancer okay classical intestinal type gastric adenocarcinoma which will have which will form glands your diffuse type is for mcqs intestinal type is not for mcqs that's a common one but that's not for mcqs your diffuse type is this i'm sure you will jump to this answer i'll get all the answers here what's the classical finding you're seeing here you have the clue also here this is your linitis plastica or your leather bottle appearance it looks like a leather bottle right that's why we call it in leather bottle appearance or a linitis plastica fine got it great so what do you see in microscopy of linitis plastica you tell me i'll show you the image it's a classical thickened thing you won't have a proliferative growth in infiltrative growth this gross finding of linitis plastica what do you see in microscopy microscopy zygnet ring cells perfect so do they look like zygnet ring they do look like zygnet ring right perfect zygnet ring appearance they are individual cells they don't form glands and the nucleus is in the corner and they are perfect zygnet ring appearance right you can easily identify zygnet ring cell as a spotter they can be asked even sometimes without a history it looks like a zygnet ring and that's your answer right great those are for two gastric cancers what is this just tell me one thing yeah krukenberg's also crt will have the same thing um it'll have the same zygnet ring appearance but is an ovarian metastasis that's all right okay so here uh, just answer me only one thing here they are epithelial lesions or they are sub epithelial lesions just tell me you have a mass here you have this intestine here they are epithelial or sub epithelial that's the only thing i want these are sub epithelial lesions right see if you say epithelium my epithelium is looking normal here my epithelium is completely normal here here also my epithelium is normal maybe at this part it's been compressed that's all right so they are sub epithelial mass so am i right in saying that when i'm going to have a sub epithelial mass it's predominantly a stromal lesion yes undoubtedly it's a stromal lesion right i'm having a such a big stromal lesion in your intestine only two possible like cat is said leomyoma or a cyst how to differentiate is when i'm going to have an epithelial lesion i show you will have some proliferative lesion from here but it's going on the behind side right it's going outside towards my serosa so i'm having a sub epithelial lesion either leomyoma or a cyst if i say this biopsy microscopy was this what's your diagnosis what's your diagnosis here again it's classical you have your elongated cells with a superb tiny little vacuoles the diagnosis here is just okay what's the drug used for just yes this is just there's no whorls here right you don't have whorls here leomyoma will have whorls here i have elongated cells with see this is not whorls these are the vacuoles these are the vacuoles fine this is just the classical just it's not leomyoma leomyoma like you guys said Love whorls. Love whorls like this. I don't have whorls here. This is just. And the drug we are going to use is imatinib. Okay. Any tyrosine kinase inhibitor, first generation or second generation, you are going to decide that. I want just do CD one one seven. If it's positive, you can give an imatinib. Okay. Great. Diagnosis. This is spotter. If you want, I'll give you a clue. This is PA is positive. This is a PA slide. Correct, Shushmita. Again, this is spotter. No guesses. Perfect, right? You guys are very good. You see, you are seeing whipples. You are saying it's whipples just by an image, right? Whipples is again 
remember this this is a diagnosis of exclusion it's a rare disease whipples will involve multiple systems it will involve yeah this is digestive resistant it will involve your uh, git it can involve your cns it can involve your heart it can involve your joints when you have a pyrexia of unknown origin malabsorption involving multiple organ system think of whipples you should not think whipples first whipples is a diagnosis of exclusion this is your normal light microscopy fine where you have in your you are what to say your uh, lamina propria this is my lamina propria i am having lots of clear cells your macrophages plus other inflammatory cells also there the macrophages what are these actually just tell me what are these answer this then i'll tell what is what is this i have circled three images three things that's actually not the organism right what is that perfect that's your normal mucin that's your normal mucin so i this is just to say that my stain of pas is working properly my intestinal epithelial mucin the goblet cells will be positive right that's a normal mucin it will be positive so my stain has worked that is not the organism where i am going to see the whipple's organism is like you guys said i should see them in the lamina propria so whatever i am seeing here those are the organism these are positive fine right? these are the foamy macrophages which are positive for pas and yes they will be diastase resistant that's your whipple's diagnosis fine right? great and whipple's this how the organism looks in electron microscopy they are rod shaped organisms fine right? triforma whipple i am just using this electron microscopy for the one reason they i don't know for some reason they keep asking electron microscopy for different different things maybe if it comes it might help you this is also from robins electron microscopy is not required tell me what is the investigation of choice for whipples these days do you think they will do biopsy for whipples no how do you diagnose whipples investigation of choice or gold standard or whatever you want whipples is diagnosed by pcr right it's no invasive test is rec recommended for whipples diagnosis do a pcr definitely you can diagnose whipples with confidence right okay no it's by pcr pcr for the triforma whipple it's an infectious organism right when i can do pcr for covid i can do pcr for this also right pcr is diagnostic test okay, okay. perfect okay there's a few things today we'll be having 30 questions based on something of this i have purposefully ignored a few things which will be covering in the mcqs in the test we'll have 10 pm i want you to attend actively the only thing which is going to improve us is active learning passive learning might not improve so once we solve the questions we'll have polls i want you to attempt the poll make mistakes so that you don't repeat them in the real exam so kesh we it's not whipple palate bodies i think you are confusing with this we will palate we will palate bodies are your endothelium uh, finding seen in endothelium which will have your one valvulin factor and p selective okay okay thank you guys bye bye see you uh, gold standard doesn't exist in medicine uh, speedy i don't want to disappear from medicine i am okay thank you speedy bye bye see you guys